Good morning and uh, good to be with you for another devotion uh, with Tabernacle. Just want to read some verses to you. We are still in the Sermon on the Mount and I think this is our going to be our last study on prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to just read from Matthew chapter 7 uh, verses 7 to 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Or, which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? And here we come as we're looking at this theme of prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. And we come to these words where Jesus encourages the disciples to ask, seek and knock. Which could be or should be translated as keep asking, uh, keep seeking and keep knocking. And it illustrates how the Lord was encouraging the disciples to utilise the continual avenue of prayer or don't give up on your prayers. The desire that we should have is to keep asking and this should epitomise uh, the experience of all Christian disciples. Now these words are important, uh, perhaps words that we use regularly, ask, seek and knock, but how do they translate or how should they be interpreted in uh, this particular context? Well. The first one is ask, and it means this, beg or call for or crave or desire and require. And uh, someone once commented that this means that we turn beggars at the door of mercy. And there's a real strength in this word ask when we talk about begging or calling for or craving something. And that again, should be a part of our prayer life and do we really call out to God do we really desire him to answer the prayers that we have and the requests that we make known to him then the second word is seek now this is an interesting word because it actually means to worship uh, it means to desire and uh, again it, it, it could be translated like this leave no stone unturned in your search for God's help. But as we seek him, we are also worshipping him because we know who he is and we are entrusting ourselves to him. And then knock. It means to rap with earnestness and desperation. And so here again, we look at this whole issue of desire, uh, of, of um, being earnest in our call on God for prayer and and the secret is this he says keep doing this so don't just pray once and then and then give up but keep going back keep going back keep going back to pray pray earnestly pray often leave it with the lord leave him to deal with the issues and the stresses and the strains but don't forget to keep praying see what's important here is that we know our predicament we are in a situation we're in or we are we are thinking of someone else's situation and we take it to the Lord because we know that the answer is available uh, from the what we know in the scriptures as the throne of grace for that's the place where we can find the help that we need this is what it says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 the writer says let us <clears throat> therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need now a throne obviously speaks of authority because it speaks of kingship but grace speaks of care and help and so here we see the role of the Lord Jesus in our prayers yes he is on the throne he is the great king of the universe but he is also full of grace and truth and he wants to help us in those times of need and uh, difficulty and so each of those words ask seek and knock describes diligence in the life of the believer effort desire 
all of which are so contrary, aren't they, to our modern instant society. We live in a society where everything should be done today, uh, or if not, sooner. And uh, often, this is one of the problems that we face when we come to the issue of prayer. We expect God to answer our prayer immediately. Because it's like when we go uh, to McDonald's and we order a, a meal and we have it within seconds, if you're lucky, within minutes generally. And we expect that of God. But God isn't a fast food restaurant. God isn't a fast food takeaway. He's not someone that we can just go to and demand an answer now and expect it uh, in the next breath. Sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes he does answer our prayers very quickly. But sometimes it takes a while. And we have to be careful that we are not demanding instant answers from God and that we must also understand what God's timing is uh, and, and for different reasons God gives us different timings to our prayers. There's a, there's a, se a section and an incident in the book of Daniel uh, chapter 10 and verse 12 and 13 and I often go to this when I'm feeling why haven't you answered my prayers Lord? And it says this, and an angel appeared to Daniel and said, Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. And so what we see there is that Daniel prayed and his prayer was heard. But the, the, the answer was some 21 days in coming because there was spiritual opposition in the heavenly places. See, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. So if you like, there's this spiritual supernatural battle going on to stop, to prevent our prayers coming through and to be answered. We face spiritual opposition. And that's why we must keep asking, because there's an enemy at work endeavouring to thwart God's plans for our lives. That is why a key ingredient in prayer is patience. Again, something our modern, high-paced, instant society no longer values or promotes. God's economy is totally different to that of this world. His timing is so different to ours. And often as we wait in prayer, we are the ones who are being changed. We are changed in order to come in line with the will of God for our situation and to prepare us to receive the answer that God is going to give us. And it's only as we become more desperate, it's only as we become more reliant on God that we accept His, pray His answers to our prayers uh, more easily. Because we are then more in line and in tune with his will and his purposes and so when God is as you might think not answering your prayers just consider this perhaps he's working on you he's changing you and then he's asking you to keep asking to keep seeking to keep knocking because he's he's growing your faith he wants your faith to enlarge he wants your faith to grow and he does that sometimes through the process of our prayers. Notice though that what Jesus says in verse 11 of our reading and reminds us that God only wants what's best for us. And so yes, it might take some time, but it's got to be the best because it's God's way. He says these words, If you then are evil and know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who, who ask him? Far better to wait God's timing and receive what's best for us rather than to try to solve our own problems in our own strength and make a mess of it all and end up with second best. See, because whatever we do, Whatever we try to provide for ourselves, whatever, however we try to solve our own situations and problems, they will always be second best to the answer that God has for us. So as you wait for the answer, 
to your prayers. Keep asking. Don't give up. But allow God to change your perspective, your desires and your expectations. Then, when that answer arrives, you will be fully prepared to accept what God has in store for you and for your situation. So the Lord said, Ask, seek and knock. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. God has a plan and a desire for you and for your life and he wants to fulfil it. And he wants you to become the person that he wants you to be for his purposes, for the extension of his kingdom. And so keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. And I trust and pray that the Lord will answer your prayers and give you the answer that is best for you in your situation today. As we pray, just think of that issue. Perhaps there's something which has been troubling you. Something that you've been thinking about a lot, praying about a lot. Well, pray about it again today. Just open up your heart and your life to the Lord as you, as we pray this short prayer and help him and, and allow him to come in and give you peace and to give you help and strength because we go to the throne of grace. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you today and we uh, seek your help for all of those who are listening to this this morning. We pray, Lord, that as people lift up their needs to you, that specific need which has been troubling them for perhaps many weeks or many months or even many years, we ask, Lord, that you will <coughs> be kind and gracious and that you will bring an answer and that you will bring uh, a peace into their situation. And so we pray, Lord, today uh, that you will be with us, that you will help us, you will strengthen us, and that we will never lose sight of the fact that we want what's best from you and not second best which is always from us and so we just commit ourselves to you today and ask your blessing uh, will rest upon us in all that we is said and done in all that we do and all that and, and everywhere that we go that we will be uh, witnesses to your grace and to your mercy and to your love in jesus name we ask it amen